Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, let me start again. Okay. Okay, so that's it. So now then we don't have any problem when you try to analyze it. So that's Java, PS10. And what about form? Bob conversive should be prefix uh, form. And then PGN, the yod indicates three MSG, special feature valve conversive. So what is the meaning? And he and he command. Yeah, commanded. commanded. Right, good. So who is he here? Says. Who is he? The subject. Moses. Moses. So yeah, and Moses commanded. Okay, let's move on to next word. Uh, Albert, can you help us to analyze this? About. About. Mm -hmm. All right, good job. Uh, that's uh, bar. Move on. Stan? Um, Three possibilities so far. Kai, Piel, Kifil. Kifil. Okay, good job. Why? Pata under the prefix. Good job. Pata under the prefix pronoun. And then the secondary clue is what? Hiragyod. Hiragyod. You did a good job. Yes. These two are really important diagnostic. So you need to remember for hip fill and form. Um, prefix. Form. Sorry? Prefix. Yes. What about PGN? Three MPL. Three MPL. Yes. You need to pay attention to the U ending. Special picture. Bob Donvesu. Yeah. Bob Converse. Meaning? And they. And they. If you are not familiar with this uh, causative meaning of bar, he feel meaning, just use cause. It will be okay. Oh. What is the meaning of about, by the way? Passover. Passover. So they caused something or someone to, to pass over. Pass. Yeah, over. Yeah, they will be accepted. All right, good job. So um, here, what is call, Albert? Call? Call all. <laughs> OK. Not that call. It, it has a sound, uh, same sound. Uh, voice, 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 yeah, voice. Voice, right, yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, actually, as I said, when you have a causative, especially he feels that, then it's, it's quite common that we have the real object uh, following didio marker at, but it's not uh, you know, happening all the time. Sometimes you will see that this uh, object will appear without definite uh, didio marker, so like this. So this call functions as an object. So here, uh, you are going to translate and they caused a voice to pass over. Okay, that will be accepted. And let's move on. Um, peers, do you know the, the vocabulary here? Uh, Anything that you can recognize? Uh, honey. 
looks like hine. Uh, do you do you think this is a uh, uh, a verb? No. What is this? You need you think it is a hine? Uh, could be a preposition. Yeah, you're right. Preposition bev. And then why do we have kata under the preposition? Uh, you're doing uh, good job, Pierce. I can't that's, remember. I can't uh, that's uh, preposition be. And then actually the expected vowel pointing should be shua. But why is there we have a pata? Because it is a combination of two things. Preposition ba and Preposition min also? No, um, okay. this one is uh, definite article he. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Right, so this one is be, preposition be, and definite article he. And this is one word, makhane. Have you ever memorized this? Oh, uh, camp, encampment. Yeah, right, right, camp. Oh, yeah. So what is the translation then? In? Uh, in so in the in the camp in the camp yeah right um continue and what is this uh that is a verb uh mm -hmm. ama right and um, preposition lamed i would think so that's probably got to be infinitive construct yeah right so then what, what about stem stem uh infinitive construct can't be hifil, so it's not peel, got to be cow, I guess. Yeah, right. Yeah. You said this this cannot be hifil. Why? There's no, there's no hay. Yeah, there is Before no hand, hand, yeah. hay. You're right. So then you, you answer all things here, infinitive construct. In fact, you can see that this second vowel point is O, and in the first vowel point, it should be shua. So, in fact, you know, actually, uh, under the preposition lamed, we were supposed to have shua. So, when we have shua shua, then it affects the bow system. That's why we have just the tere. Okay, but the second bow pointing still works. So, this is the infinitive construct. And then, what about PGN? None. None. Special picture. Uh, preposition lamet. Yeah, lamet preposition lamed and preposition. meaning. To say. Good, to say. All right. Um, when it comes to the translation of lemor, you can put it in either way. Uh, as we said, to say or saying. Okay. It, in, it sometimes indicates the idea that it's, it's, it's referring to the following words, you know, someone is speaking to uh, someone, the following words. So that's it. Let's continue. Uh, John P. What is the ish? Uh, men. Okay. And isha. Uh, and women. All right, men and women. Oh, let's move on. Uh, what is this? This is a verb. And can you recognize the root letters? Uh, yes. What is it? Asa. Asa. Very good. Asa. What about stem? Uh, he feel. Okay. Why do you think this is he feel? Uh, um, what is that? Uh, uh, prefix pronoun under prefix pronoun, it is uh, <clears throat> right. Uh, probably most of you already got your translation piece by uh, yesterday, and some of you made uh, the mistakes. All right, when it comes to full week verb, like asa, when I say double week verb, uh, it ends. In he, third he, and then the first root letter is a weak verb like uh, cultural sounds or rash, and they are normally considered like uh, double weak verb. Okay, 
So in the case, there is no difference between chi stem and chi field stem. Whether uh, there is verb conversive or not. One more time, if you are dealing with a double weak verb and if you have kata under the prefix pronoun, you have to include two possibilities of the stem. They are kal and hifil. Okay, oh, only a few of you got, got it actually. So uh, you cannot ignore this uh, uh, possibility of kal. So you always need to think about it just in case of a double weak verb. Is, is that clear? Okay. So in this case, then you need to put Q and H. And let's move on. What about form, Jumpy? Prefix. Right, prefix. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> uh, three CPL. Okay, this is prefix form. Is it, uh, are you sure about C? Uh, three MPL. Right, three MPL. Move on. Special feature. Um, <clears throat> uh, L, L2. L2. So I, is it preposition? No, this um, negative particle, negative particle, uh, which means not. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, okay, you can just say include al and ot because they are all connected to yes. the main verb through my case. So this al, the typical, I mean, the technical name of this al is negative article and you say al, all right? And ot, what do you mean by ot? You must know the vocabulary. Do you remember? Old. Steel. Right. Again. And still. Okay. Thank you, Amos. Okay, then uh, how are you going to translate it? A uh, meaning, meaning, uh, Trumpy. How are you going to put the uh, meaning here? Um, what is the subject? You say three MPL. So the day. subject should be day. Day. Okay, day. Prefix uh, form with a verb conversive should be what tense? Past, past tense. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. What is it? Sorry. Past. And? <laughs> and past tense, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, Bob conversive. Bob conversive is uh, made of Bob, Pata, and prefix pronoun. In this case, you don't have Bob conversive. So Bob yes. conversive is always in the past tense. So this one with the Bob conversive should be uh, in the reversive. opposite tense. So future, future they yeah. will. And what is uh, the meaning of asa? So then uh, you need to put make. Yeah, make. So they and will make they will or cost, cost yeah, to cause make. to make. Yeah, make. So you need to put these two meanings. Okay. Otherwise, you will lose a 0.5 mark. Okay. Then, Chombi, last one. How are you going to uh, put the meaning of R here then? Uh, they will not cost. Uh, they. Uh, they will not cost to make. They will still not cost to make. Okay, so then they will not make or they will not cost to make. I think that's uh, acceptable. But anyway, we are going to talk about this one later. Translation here should not be said in a done that way. Okay, uh, Chompi, I'm going to mute you. Okay, thank you. Good job. So um, you need to... Uh, 
put the meaning of all, then maybe we can say again. So they will not make again. They will not cause to make again. So that's going to be a meaning. All right. And making what? Does anybody know the meaning of melaka? Uh, battle. No. Work. No. Business. Work. Yes. Work. Business. So it refers to kind of a work, right? So they are going to say, um, they will not make work again. Okay. They will not make anything. Okay. Something like that. The idea is you will not work again. And what about this, uh, Amos? Can you recognize anything here? Hi. Uh, to me, it looks like a inventive construct because of the le preposition, like a lame preposition in front. Okay, so you you recognize the presence of lame preposition. Okay, mm -hmm. then what else? Hmm. Uh, have you ever memorized this word instead of tat, taluma? Oh, ho hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. Uh, so this like under the first tab um, looks like, uh, what to say, tab looks like a kind of like um, a prefix. Okay. Um... Is that right? No, actually, um, a prefix form cannot be attached to a preposition. If you think this is verb, then it should be infinitive construct because of the presence of preposition lamed. But in this case, actually, this is not a verb, but it's noun. That's why I'm just asking you if you have memorized this noun. Actually, this is a noun, whole word. So teluma. Have you ever memorized teluma? Anyone? And then. It's new vocabulary, just the offering, offering. So then you, you didn't memorize this one. So then for offering, two offering, but it's good that Amos could recognize this preposition Lamet. And what about Ka Kodesh, Amos? This is like a Ha, the, the first Ha, it is a different article and Kodesh, it is holy. Holy. So is this um, adjective or noun? Adjective. Actually, uh, do you see the difference between Kodesh and Kadesh? Kadash? Kadosh? Kadash? Kadash, Kadash. It's be Have set you... apart. Be set apart. Yeah, be set apart is a verb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, this one is. Um, like as you said, sacredness. Okay, so the sacredness, holy place, the sacredness. Okay, so then um, and let me ask you this question one, one more time, um, Amos. As I said, it is meant to be ending in he. And why is that we have tab ending? The uh, the head is removed, so like um, adding one, um, adding one like on the uh, the top to compensate. Okay, okay. In fact, um, if you think this hair is dropped off, then there must be some reason because in the case we are uh, expecting something, you know, should be uh, following after hair. That's the case that you know when uh the well, there's another the possibility there's another possibility turning oh. it in from um fem feminine singular to feminine plural okay but this one is also a feminine singular ending but oh. the reason why we have the specific the change of feminine form is this construct chain okay so uh, it hints at this combination or construct chain, okay? So 
this one is connected to the preceding noun through of. Okay, so the translation is for the offering of the sacredness. This tab is about connecting these two nouns together. Okay, good job, Amos. So then, can you try to put all the translation together, Amos? Find well, the, the tr translation. Okay, the, the, the literal translation. So start from the beginning. Yes, please. Uh, and Moses commanded mm -hmm. and uh, let a voice pass over uh, the, the encampment. Mm -hmm. in the encampment mm -hmm. uh, saying uh, mm -hmm. man and woman uh, well, this is, do, do not again uh, make a man and a woman um, what uh, this one I said this is business like I, I mean uh -huh. I, I yeah business um, business for for the for the offering of the holiness. All right. So um, you did a really good job. Actually, ish and isha are the compound subject for they here. Okay. So when I, when we say they will not make again or do again, so then the translation is. Men and women will not do again business and work. Is that clear? So we need to understand that ish and isha is the subject, compound subject. That's why it is coming for plural. For the person masculine plural. Okay. So then let's move on. Yeah, you did a really good job in uh, trying to put the literal translation. So except this translation, uh, everything was perfect because this is the first time for us to deal with negative imperative. And let's move on. PF prefix and anyway, just for your information, let's read it. Uh, Stephen, would you would you read? Yes. PL prefix. The the form of uh, form indica indicator for the peer prefix is shua and the prefix pronoun. According to the missing letter rule, the root word is uh, san sana. Chava. Uh, sana. Chava. Oh, uh, chava. Uh -huh. uh, omission of dagesh force there occurs almost always at the end of the word. Okay. The verb sa sanas is a common verb in the Bible is found almost exclusively in the peer. Okay, so nothing new. Do you have any question regarding this? As I said, Zava is a peer stem. Then the why is that we don't have Dagesh uh, Porte in the middle root letter, which is the Vav. And as I said, the Vav comes at the end. So that's why, because of the pronunciation, the, the Dagesh Porte cannot come. That's it. Okay. So, we already did this, no, no, no need, and done with this as well. Okay, what about this? Carl infinitive construct, non-PGN, Lame preposition, meaning to say or saying. All right, this is the most important part, negation of the imperative. Uh, Stephen, would you like to continue? Negation of imperative. To produce a negative command, Hebrew does not neg neg negate an imperative form. Uh, pro prohibitions, negative commands are expressed with the negative particle uh, law or al, al with the prefix. The partic uh, particle uh, law before the prefix can express an absolute and permanent prohibitions. The particle out before the prefix express an immediate and specific pro uh, prohibition. This is quite interesting. I love this. Uh, last two sentences. 
the particle lo and then the particle r they are functioning to negate you know comment the imperative form okay but there is a little difference in terms of nuance as i said the particle lo before the prefix can express an absolute and permanent prohibition but for today's passes we don't have law but we have al and what is al about al means the particle al before an a, an prefix express an immediate and specific prohibition so when we try to um, interpret the negation of al today what was that uh, man and woman will not do again business so it is not permanent you know commitment prohibition right it's immediate and specific prohibition so it's going to be quite interesting if you read the hebrew bible and if you see you know do not you know what is it um uh, 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 uh make any idol then i think you will be able to see that specific uh, particle law because that must be a permanent and absolute prohibition so now when you are dealing with law or r in hebrew language then you need to understand this nuance in terms of the difference between law and r okay so this is quite interesting so if you see law and r then you know try to see um or if this is a permanent one or just a immediate one okay especially as a negative imperative is that clear okay so now the the important point is this to produce a negative uh comment hebrew does not negate an imperative form the imperative form is always used as imperative in a positive sense okay so the horror you know uh and worship god and pray but if you want to negate the, the sense of imperative then it's normally used together with negative particles low i plus prefix form is it clear then how are i going to analyze this only the difference is okay asa and then the card and hip fill prefix the mpl and the special feature you have to put negative imperative so you need to highlight this negative imperative i think this is um, our first time to deal with negative imperative so highlight it and then whenever you have negative particle r and no and plus prefix form and you think if you think this is a um what is it a negative imperative then you need to put negative imperative as a special feature and then also you need to uh what was it i think we yeah also you 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 are supposed to put old again because it's just connected to to the main verb so it's not only negative imperative but odd should be there too okay so the what is the then translation uh we are going to put like this do not let them do because this is commandment all right if we say they will not do then it doesn't carry the strong sense of commandment in so you need to say do not okay let somebody you know the action okay let's move on the translation the return translation and moses commanded and they caused a voice to pass over in the camp saying do not let each man and woman do again an occupation for the offering of the sacredness kjb's translation is and moses gave commandment and they caused it to be proclaimed 
throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. Um, any be, so Moses sent word round the camp that no man or woman should prepare anything more as a contribution for the sanctuary. And I read that Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. Okay. Especially when you are comparing NIV translation uh, to this return translation, can you see any theological difference? Not really theological, but it's not really you know, deep theological issue. But what, what, what difference can you see here? especially reading NIV. Uh, I want you to pay attention to anything else. Anything else. But if you really pay attention to the return translation of old, then it, it carries the idea of a game or still. So the idea is people brought something and the people did something for the offering of the holy place, okay? But it is a commandment that you are not supposed to do it again, do it again. So people were doing something and then it is a prohibition and from this time on earth, you cannot do it again. But here, anything else sounds like, you know, uh, all of a sudden, okay, do not make anything. Uh, you know, it's, it doesn't carry the nuance that people were previously doing this, you know. So uh, when you read the, 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 this uh, literal, I mean, the Hebrew Bible, then you can see the, what was really going on, okay? So that is the benefit for us to study this holy language. Did you take a shower this morning? to deal with this holy language. <laughs> when the manuscript uh, copied, you know, the Bible, they, you know, that they took a shower and they wore the new clothes and that's the way for them to deal with this holy Bible. So, yeah, it's, it's great because of Jesus Christ, we, we can deal with this Hebrew language without dying. You know, when we have uh, sins, we are not holy. Oh, anyway, okay, let's move on. So, oh, every word, uh, every word is here, the meaning. Uh, malaka means work, business, occupation. As I said, it's um, uh, ending in ahe, all right? It's not tab ending. So, as I said, tab is, ahe uh, is replaced by tab when the word is connecting, is connected to the following noun. And this one, telumat, is offering. Kadosh, uh, ha kodesh means ha plus kodesh, definite article, and the second. Okay. Uh, we are done. Uh, when it comes to lesson 39. So what what is what is our assignment, Sister Labaya? Our assignment is lesson is page 188. Page 188. Number one, two, and five. Okay. Did you get it? All right, and then I think it's already posted on the Moodle as well. Yes, yes. Okay, so it's just you... three questions. All right, do you have any question? Then let's move on to lesson 38, point eight. Uh, if you have your textbook with you right now, please look at page 183. You know what? I was sitting on my chair and then I, I did it by myself and it was so fun to do it. And Sultanis 
it took me quite long time. You know, when I say long time, it doesn't, of course, mean that four hours to five hours, but it took me more than what I was expecting. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, you know, uh, even being a Hebrew teacher, it's impossible for us to memorize everything, okay? That's why we are officially allowing our students to use our Bob chart in a certain point. But what is really important is you need to understand how those grammatical aspects function and work. Even if you are going to look at, you know, the analysis of Bible works when you're working on specific passage and words and, you know, looking at how our master, the master of the teacher analyze everything. It must be, you know, correct, right? You need to understand the explanation. Mm. So you, you need to know how those things are working together. Especially yesterday, you are talking about you know some uh, confusing stuff. After learning uh, all those patterns, okay, in terms of a bow point, in terms of uh, oh, okay, normally you know. The, the most important thing that we are dealing with nowadays is the bow point. And when a verb is attached to a pronominal suffix at the end, and what it happened, it affects the bow system. So the vocalization of the bow changes. Then the question is, how are we going to recognize the right Form. Because when we are paying attention to the vowel system, you know, we can recognize the form because the form has a lot to do with the vowel system. So that's uh, why we need to really practice. Okay. Uh, right. So then let's, um, let's, do this. We need to practice. That's why we need to practice. Uh, let me show you. Oh. Okay. I want you to do this. Um, we have A, B, C, and then numbers. So I'm going to ask all of you to take one. Okay. So let me say A1, Pierce, A, B, uh, Romero, A, C, Kanae. And A2, James, B2, Sharon, C2, Albert, and A3, Amos, B3, Jim, C3, Ami, 4A, Chumpy, and B4, Pinihas. C4, Stephen, and A5, Samson. So I want you to uh, analyze it and let us know the stem, the form, and PGN. Okay? And special feature. Do it right now. Uh, you can use your verb chart. I will give you just uh, three minutes.
uh, just for information, uh, Elabaya just uh, gave me a notice that, you know, uh, there is a contact tracing team coming in. So we need to wear our masks. Uh, this is from our business administrator at Bench. I think it's a Benjamin uh, Sal, 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 Salzar, Sol, Solizar. Uh, Benjamin Solizar is, I mean, tested positive, right? So uh, team, a team is coming from the city. So we need to wear the mask, make sure, okay, if you go out and keep the social distancing and then wear a mask. Labaya, are we allowed to go out then? Bef before um, this tracing is done? I'm not sure. He didn't tell me. Okay. Sorry, my, my video is not going on. But he didn't tell me. He just said that we should, um, we Wear should the keep mask. our, we should, everyone should have a mask on. Okay. At least for those of us who are on campus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, are you done? One minute. One thing that you need to bear in mind is that, right, uh, if you are dealing with a bird, that the two pronominal a pronominal suffix then it may affect the bowel point. In that case, what you can see uh, from the verb chart may not work. That's the 30 seconds and let's do this. Pierce, do you still need more time? Um, I do, but I'm not sure I'm going to get it in that okay. time. So yeah. I'll just have a go yeah, now. Let's, so. let's get started. Um, Pierce, how 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 did you analyze it? Anything that you recognize? Let's let us know. Okay. Um, I guess process of elimination. Really, we've got the verb pakad. Uh huh. Uh, strong verb. It's not not in the hifil stem, mm -hmm. not in the pl stem either. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be in the cal stem. Okay, I think. Um, right. And then ending uh, em is a masculine ending, but it's the tab that's throwing me. It's a team, it's the tab that's in there that I'm not sure about. Okay. Um, Right, we have T ending tears. Actually, mm -hmm. this is T ending. Does it familiar with you? T, what kind of form can take T ending? Ah, As you said, ah. you're right, it's a pakat. And this is, um, you know, coming together with the three different components. Actually, the, the member pakat and T and mem ending. So we have three things to analyze. E, what form? 
What PGN? Do you remember? Um, T and no. Okay, nothing. A, A, to P. Tem, ten, nu. I know that the uh, T is not really common you use. So probably you, you, you are not able to recognize it easily, but T is a specific ending for what oh, is yeah, that? One, one, one uh, CSG, one common. Thing yeah, one is. CSG affix. Affix, yeah, yeah. When it comes to T ending or A, TA, T, T, U, TEM, TEM, NU, U is a little bit tricky and A is a little bit tricky, but TA, T, T, U, uh, tem ten nu. They are quite nu is a little bit tricky, but okay. Let me tell you, but the t is a quite unique ending for a fixed form. So if you have t ending, then uh, it indicates it clearly indicates what one c s g affix. So you told me that this one must be constant, okay? Packard constant, and then one c s g affix form. Then the next question is, what is the ending of m mem? Um, pro, is it a pronominal yeah, suffix? Yeah, right, exactly. That's um, pronominal suffix indicating what? Um, three, M. Yeah. Yeah, right. And noon indicates three FPL. So this one is three MPL suffix. So as a special feature, you need to put three MPL pronominal suffix. So now we are dealing with some cases where um, a verb is coming together with uh, a pronominal suffix. Not all the time for today's um, uh, exercise. Sometimes you do, sometimes you do, you do not. So you need to know when, okay? So, but im ending, it's like mem ending is quite obvious. Probably, you know, you, you think like, oh, im ending must be related to uh, participle form. But uh, that's why you need to practice on this, okay? But the question is, if you look at your book chart and go to the strong verb, and you need to look at page 432 and go to 1C SG of this form, which is said, Pakat the T. Do you have your verb chart with you? Page 432, yeah. then you have 1C SG of this form, and you have got the T. I'm trying to say is the first vowel point is what? Hamex under the pe, according to our verb chart. But we have shua here. Why? Because of this mem ending and it affects the vowel point. So now, even though we cannot double check this one in our verb chart, then you need to understand how it works. You understand? Okay. It's not identical because of the presence of this pronominal suffix. Normally, normally, most of the time it affects, but sometimes it does not. So that's why it's tricky. But when it doesn't affect the bowel system, then you just stick to you know, the, what, what we can see, the bowel point. And then it, it normally appears when we have a double weak verb. But most of the time, it will definitely affect the bowel system. Okay, uh, let's move on to. A, uh, B1, and it's uh, Romero. Yes, sir. Uh, for my analysis, continuation of uh, Brother Peer's mm -hmm. uh, verb is pakad. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's uh, imperative because the second root letter is without holem. That's great. So... What so the tendency what is kal is this? Kal, right? Kal, kal and then what form? Uh, affix. Why? Because of the yod ending one C P L one C yeah. S G. Uh, it's not yod ending, but you need to say T ending. I, okay. But, yeah. All right. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you are right. That's and what else? And there is a uh, second uh, root letter is uh, the vowel point is pata. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, I think uh, you are right. As you said, this is a fifth form. Then what is the PGN? T one C one C S G. So now you you said pakat hal affix one C S G. What about special future? Um, verb conversion. No, no. Verb conversion must be coming in the beginning. So in this case, uh, you you recognize this. Uh, what is this? Yeah. This one is pronominal suffix again. So uh, you need to pay attention to this. This mem and this nun, they are all pronominal suffix. So, but mem indicates oh. three m here, and nun indicates three f here. Suffix. Is that clear, Romero? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I think then we are done with this. Who is this? Hanae. Oh, it's too easy. To the, the most brilliant scholar, Hebrew scholar. Let's do this. She can have mine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you do that? <laughs> Kal Hanae, go ahead. Kal affix one CSG, mm -hmm. then special feature none. Mm -hmm. Good job. So easy, go home and take that. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, this one comes with comments. And then this is the typical form that we are expecting from our verb chart. And you need to pay attention to why is that then we have chua, chua. And when, you know, it takes a special pronoun and suffix and it affects those vowel system. That's what I want to see. Let's move on, James. Yes, the root is pakat. Okay. And cow stem, uh -huh. prefix form, yeah, three because MSG, of the yod. Yes, uh -huh. and three MSG. Uh, special feature, three MPL pronoun suffix. Right, good job. Yes. Darren? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, pakat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cal stem, affix mm -hmm. form, mm -hmm. 3, C, 3 CPL, mm -hmm. special feature non. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, good job. And this one is appearing as identical as uh, the form of uh, our bulb chart. So there is no really big difference here. Okay, I think this one, okay, you did a good job. And then you can understand this one comes with the comments. Yes. I have a question. The okay. uh, B number one, uh -huh. the suffix is, uh, I think that is not uh, noon for mm -hmm. Babu. Oh, yeah, you're so right. I think, I think this is the long one. Yeah, yes, three you're MSG. right. This is a three uh -huh. MSG uh, uh, pronoun suffix. My apologies. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's not final form of noon like this. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah this one is okay. Bab. Sharon is right. This <laughs> one is not noon, but it's, this is a bath. It's the must be three M S G pronoun suffix. My apology. Thank you, Sharon. Good job. Okay. And let's move on. And uh, Albert. Yes, I am here. Uh, The stem will be gal. Mm -hmm. uh, form will be affix because the stem mm -hmm. and the BGN, uh, yeah, BGN is uh, uh, two MBL. Mm -hmm. uh, no special features. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this one is identical. So we, we don't see any exception here as well. So if you look at your world chart, everything is identical in the bow yes. form. Okay, thank you. Uh, who is next? Amos. So next, A3 on um, root, Picard, stem, he fell. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's next? Um, uh, form. Uh, form, this is uh, affix. Why? 
there's no prefix, and then there is like the T, like an ending. Right. Good job. End. And the PGN is one C uh, singular. Uh huh. And the uh, special feature it is ka pronominal suffix meaning I appointed you. Right. So ka is what is it? What is what is the special PGN ka? Uh, second masculine singular. Good job. So you did a good job, Amos. Because of the presence of preformative he in the beginning, this one is he feels them. And you did a good job recognizing T, uh, a fixed pronoun. So that's why it's, it should be a fixed form. And we have ha pronominal suffix, meaning to M S G, translated as you. Good job. Uh, let's move on to Jim. So Pakar, briefly, mm -hmm. uh, it's Hifel. Hifel, why? The MPL, the, uh, the Hiragyod. Hiragyod, yeah, Pakar right. The That's prefix. secondary, but what is the most important thing? Pakar and the, the prefix. Yes, word. good job. And then? And um, the wow converse was the uh, All right. special, special feature. feature. And then what about PGN? What did you say? Uh, uh, three MPL. Right, three MPL. You're together with the Shurek. Good job. Yeah, you did a good job. And this one is a hip first time. And move on. Ami. Yes, sir. Uh, Picard. Mm -hmm. Carl. Uh -huh. Maybe participle. Right. Why do you think this is participle? Uh, Horen. Okay. Uh, as I told you, Horen defective can be replaced by holen plene. And sometimes it happens the other way around. So you're gonna be uh, flexible, okay? And yeah, go ahead. Um, MSG, mm -hmm. special feature, no. All right, good job, very good. Next, Chompi. Uh, root is bow. Uh-huh. And is it peer? Are you asking me to answer? <laughs> I think PL. Do you think this is PL? Uh, yes. Why? Because uh, under prefix pronoun, it is uh, Shewa. Is it? No. No. So it is Ka. No. <laughs> uh, he feel. Okay, so then let's go to the hollow verb chart and then let's look at it. Um, PL, if you are curious about PL, it's not appearing in the PL because the middle two letters will be disappearing. So the concern is, the question is when is that uh, the middle two letter is replaced by hit a goat? And that is for the specific stem. Do you remember this? Uh, yes, he feel. Yeah, hip field. So this one is a hip field stem. And then this is a hollow verb bow. And what, what else can you recognize? What is this top in the beginning? What about the form? Prefix. Yeah, prefix. PGN. Uh, PGN to FPL. To FPL at the same time. Uh, To FPL, is it because of this na? Uh, ah, yes. You're right. You're right. I was <laughs> testing you. Okay, so then you cannot see anything else. Yes. All non special right. feature. All right. That's a good job. And let's move on. Let's finish. Okay. Phineas. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the root, uh, root letter is bo mm -hmm. and cow. Mm -hmm. Prefix. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you think this is uh, kal? Why? Uh, because the prefix under the patas. And this is hollow verb. Okay, let's go to hollow verb chart again. <clears throat> and then you need to see uh where is it uh three actually uh 
prefix form, 3 MPL. So this one is uh, actually yakumu, right? You are right. Uh, under the prefix pronoun, we, we can have kamets under the past then. But if you look at page 440, the, the, the last one, when it is attached to verb conversive, then it is vaya kam. Vaya kam. Are you following <clears throat> me? Vaya kam. But you need to pay attention to this. If you have one dot or two dot or three dot, oh. then that must be hit this then. Oh. Okay. So this one is not car. This one is he feel. Oh. Okay. Because the ordinary bow point for car mm. is gonna be kam or something like this. Kamets. It's not. It's not kire here. Oh. Okay. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, can you give me oh, just two yeah. minutes? Two more minutes. Then let's move on. Uh, Stephen. Yes. Uh, it's. Uh, bow and okay. uh, he, he feel. Mm -hmm. uh, Why do you he, think this is he feel? One, uh, it's two dot. Exactly. <laughs> the expected bow point for Carl is holem above be. If you look at your bow chart again, page 440, look at the bottom of uh, prefix slash bow conversion. And you have ba ya bo, actually, ba ya bo. Uh, so you see that this whole name becomes one or two or three that then you need to think about uh, this possibility of hippos them did a good job Stephen. Uh, last one can i <laughs> you need to do this for samson but samson come on oh man okay so the word is bow uh -huh. and uh hippo stem because of what? Uh, because if the one dot under the first uh, consonant. You're talking about the Sihiran Yeah. All right. Or, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And then? And um, prefix. Uh huh. And then uh, 3FS or 2MS. All right. Good job. Very good. What about special feature? Oh, about conversive. And then? Uh, and still and she brought it. Oh, am I missing something? Yeah, very important one. What about the M ending of mem? Oh, uh, three MPL. All right. What three MPL? What? Uh, pronominal affix. Good job. Oh. Very good. Yeah. You know, actually, um, I think number one two tens are not really that hard but from number tens on above are really challenging so it might be really helpful for us to look at those things so we don't want to really do everything here but why don't you just uh, continue this one i think um, next tuesday i want to continue with this so for the meantime if you have time please go ahead to do it it's not your assignment but uh, I want to spend more time, okay? So, but what do you need to uh, remember is this. Or what do you need to remember? I mean, uh, when a pronominal suffix is attached to a verb, then the vowel point may not work because it will affect the vowel system. And then what do you need to do? You need to be flexible, but as we practice, you know, it can be easily guided by the presence of some important components like a fixed pronoun. And then still, the, the, uh, what is it? The important indicators of he feel stem, PL stem, and car stem, and they are there. Okay, so you can do it. So thank you. Do you have any question? Um, professor, like yeah. the person you said got test positive, like Benjamin, uh -huh, like uh -huh. you know, uh, yeah. uh, is he a campus? You know, working on campus. I do not know much actually. I think yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, okay. working. 
Okay. So that's Thank why you. the a team needs to come to to do the tracing. Like everybody have to be, you know, like uh, tested. I I don't think so. I think it's not testing, but tracing to know where this guy has been, you know, so that you know those who have been with him and uh, need to be self quarantined and something like that. I see. So we, it doesn't mean that we are going to have, you know, the test. Okay, I guess. I think those who were with him need to be, you know, tested somehow. I don't know. That's what we need to figure out. Thank you for the question. Anyone so, else? So A4. Okay, no. A4. A4 is PA stem? No, that's hip stem. Ah, hip stem. Yeah, yeah because of heat Okay? Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'm going to see you next Tuesday. May God continue to bless these lovely heavenly people. Blessing. Thank Bye. you, sir. Happy weekend. Yes, Enjoy the durian. Yeah, you too. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Benjamin, you give one,